right, here we go. Live? Yeah, three, two, one, here we go. Uh, how's everybody doing today? Um, I'm live here with Chad Cottery, Cottery and uh, he is actually the owner of Dash Clicks, the upcoming, um, actually it's already upcoming. I mean, it's already, he's already here. I mean, he's already arrived and he's already came. So uh, actually what he does is he helps uh, on the back end, like, you know, for you agency owners that are out there. I mean, if you're on, on live, show us some love on here. You know, we want to make sure that, you know, we got some engagement we want this to go out to uh, other agency owners and everything. So just, uh, uh, yeah, so actually, on, well, I'll let him tell a little bit about the story, but I'm going to kind of introduce him a little bit as far as, you know, just the fact that, you know, I did a post, I guess, on the original post that I had. I actually um, told, you know, kind of gave his backstory where people said it wasn't going to work for him. You know, people laughed at him. He gave him the idea, told him he had a dream, he had a vision, he had a goal, and everybody kind of laughed at him. But the thing is, you know, look where he is right now. I mean, I let him go into a little more detail. But actually what he does is he services um, agencies. I mean, uh, anything that you need, you know, you social media agency owners out there that, you know, if you need any help with your I don't know where that feedback's coming from. But uh, yeah, how you doing? Uh, it looks like, yeah, I guess Chad's in the uh, system now. But uh, yeah, so um, yeah, so anybody that, you know, if you need help, you know, as far as building web pages, your social media work, because actually, you know, when I first got started, actually, I'm still am, you know, pretty much started. But the thing is, you know, I was spending a lot of time on servicing my clients and everything like that. And, you know, once I found a, a guy like this, a system, actually, Rob Quinn hooked me up with him. Um, through his uh, program or whatever they're kind of you know doing a joint venture and everything but um, yeah so the situation with that is you know your agency owners that are actually servicing uh, all of your clients yourself if you're building out their ads building out your Facebook ads uh, building out Google ads building out um, you know any campaigns that you're building out this guy will help you uh, on the back end and uh, let me just go ahead and just let him tell a story you know how did you uh, come to develop you know just where'd you get the idea from well, actually just tell us how you started I mean were you an agency owner or you know just tell your story from the beginning entrepreneur your uh, the start of your entrepreneurial career entrepreneurial journey yeah, for sure, man. So um, when I started my business, it was in uh, September of 2009. So it's about to hit 10 years. Uh, and essentially, when we started, um, I actually obviously started by myself. I started working out of my parents' house. For those of you guys who are friends with me on Facebook, I'm sure you've seen the picture that I put up the other day was this picture in my mom's house with this old school desk and a laptop that I had. Um, and I was working from there. That was like the first three or four years of my life, just literally working out of that room. Um, and essentially, you know, I remember people coming up to me, even my friends used to come over. Um, I was younger. I was like 20 years old at the time. You know, my friends used to come over at the house and they used to say, hey, what, you know, were you going to go get a job? Are you going to go do something with yourself? And I'm like, no, I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to ride this out. I, I think I'm going to do something big here. Uh, and um, it's funny because back then I wasn't even doing the stuff that we were doing now. Um, you know, when our parent company is called Social Agency, which is our retail digital marketing agency, we do well over seven figures a year in recurring revenue. Um, now, um, but back then when we started, we started off, um, or I started off as doing a couple of services. I was doing printing, which was really my main, my main service that I started off on, uh, which I don't recommend anybody starts it's like the worst business you can get into. But back then it was good because, um, you know, Craigslist was really popular back in the day. So I would go on Craigslist and I would start posting. I would do like 50, 50 posts a day posting for people who are, business owners who would go to Facebook and look for business cards or logo design or postcards or anything like that. Right. Uh, and I would basically go, I would do the design. I was a graphic designer. I was really artsy back in the day. Um, I would go, I would do the designs and I would charge them, I don't know, like a hundred bucks to do a business card design. Then I would charge them another hundred bucks to print the business cards. And I would send that off to a trade printer. And that's kind of how my business started. I started doing that for probably the first couple of months. Um, I, then I built my own website, um, which is called printerprinting.com still up today. And we don't, we get phone calls. We don't even take orders. Anymore. I don't know why we got to shut it down. Um, but, um, uh, essentially that was built to get people who were interested in printing, um, in the local area, which we're in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Right. So, um, I started off doing that. I was sending off orders to print. And then after I started doing these people's business cards and their graphics, they would, ask me, they would ask me if I can build their website. I was like, yeah, I'll figure it out. You know, I took the order, started building websites, and became a web designer a year later. I was watching YouTube videos, and this was back in the day when there was no courses um, that you can just go and you can just buy a, a course, right? This was just going on YouTube and finding people who were just putting out really good content. 
Um, so I started building websites. Then I kept getting the question, you know, a couple months after that, hey, that's great, the website looks awesome. How do I get people to the website, right? And I started doing marketing and I started building Facebook pages and started doing SEO. Um, SEO for me is, in my opinion, what really scaled our agency. Um, we used to go out and sell SEO. SEO is really hot. It still is really hot. It's one of our top performing um, products that we have and one of our top sellers within our, our uh, actual company. Um, I would say probably about 60% of the people who we service are in SEO packages, right? So um, that's pretty much the start of the journey. Um, then obviously going and hiring employees as needed. Uh, I remember the first employee I hired, um, she came to the office. I, I split an office with my friend and had a little room in his office. It was like 150 or 200 square feet little space that can fit two desks. And that's really what it is. Uh, and I was there for two years. I had one employee. Um, then I gradually hired a salesperson. Salesperson would do walk-ins, literally literally go. I remember I remember this like it was yesterday. He had a little Vespa. And he would take his Vespa and he would, he would, a little scooter, and he would go and he would park in plazas. And I created a little book for him. And he would just go out, show people the services that we were offering, and say we're, that they're going to run a, a, we're going to run a free consultation uh, or a free, um, like a free business analysis report. Uh, on their digital marketing, right? And we would scan their social media, we would scan their directory listings, we would scan multiple different assets, we would scan their website, and then I would jump on a one-on-one, -on -one. I would do a join.me session with them, show them the report, and actually start selling. That, I think, was the catapult of our agency. Uh, I remember within the first month, we closed like 20 accounts that were paying us 499 bucks each. Um, that was huge for us. And then I was like, all right, how do I do this and just keep doing it, but on a larger scale? So then we moved into a bigger office. We started hiring, and 10 years later, we have probably over 25 employees in our office, about to hit 30. We just hired a new developer for Dashflix, um, and then we we're hiring two Facebook ad specialists as well and a project manager. So now we're this, I would say, this pretty badass fulfillment team. I mean, 10 years later, we have the processes down for all of our services. Um, we, we have been in business so long, and we've ran uh, campaigns for so many different industries. Um, and I'm getting like a lot of support tickets and dash clicks so of people asking me about all these industries. Like, have you ever ran a campaign for this? I'm like, yeah, we ran it. We've done it before. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the backstory and kind of where we are today. No, I guess as far as, you know, um, well, obviously you heard his story as far as how he got started with just one thing and then he expanded. So would you recommend that for most agency owners, um, you know, that are just starting out? Because I know a lot of people have issues niching down. And um, I've actually heard, you know, on both sides, I've interviewed a couple of people that say, you know, you need to niche down. But then I've also heard, you know, a couple of people say, you know, you really don't need to niche down. You can just go broad. I mean, I guess it just kind of depends. I mean, what, what, what's your opinion of that? So, all right. So I'm, I'm in a little bit of a different mindset because, you know, we're a larger agency and we have multiple clients and we don't service a specific niche. Right. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think we ever service a specific niche. Um, I think maybe if you can call it a niche, maybe like the home services, um, but it wasn't like dialed down to like, oh, we only service plumbers or we only service HVAC guys, right? Um, I think home services was our broad niche and we were going after like plumbers, electricians, um, contractors. And the reason why we were going for it is because when we had our, we had a call center with like, I don't know, we had like almost like 13 people in our office. Um, now that call center is a video room. We don't even do outbound calls anymore because we get so much inbound. Um, but when we were doing the call center, we, we would target that, that specific niche because those people have their phones in their pocket. When you're calling a painter, chances are, not all the time, but chances are it's a small company and that painter will literally answer his phone and you can speak directly to him without having to get through a gatekeeper, without having to go through hurdles just to speak to the owner, let alone now you have to pitch him and try to offer him services, right? So for me, um, I, I never really had a niche. Um, I, I, you know, I, I've seen a lot of people talk about niches and dialing down and, and I get that. Um, however, with dash clicks, I think the beauty of it is you don't really need to focus too much on a niche. Um, you can literally bring a client on, we can service it no matter what the niche is, no matter what the services are, as long as we obviously provide those services and we provide almost, I think every big general, you know, um, um, uh, digital marketing style service, right? All the way from SEO to website design to Google PPC to Facebook and Instagram ads um, to chatbots, which is coming out soon in a couple of months, um, to SEO, directory listings, content, social media posting, right? 
uh, pretty much every service that every agency is now offering to their clients. So the beauty about it is back then we couldn't do that. And you, it was really hard. Um, for, forget, let alone the niche. Um, what happens if you go out and you sell a client, you sell them a website design, you sell them SEO, and you sell them a Facebook campaign, right? You get the guy all hyped up. Now you got to have three specialists to actually produce that order. You need a website designer. You need a certified Google AdWords specialist. You need somebody to run the Facebook campaign or whatever it is that they bought, right? So you need those different people. Um, so if somebody, let's say that client's paying you three grand a month, now you need to go hire three employees plus pay yourself. It's almost impossible, right? Um, you'd actually lose money. So that's scaling. Um, the reason why Dashflix, I think, is, is, has taken on so fast and had so many people have been signing up and, and we're getting so many orders. We're, thank God, you know, I pray that we're doing very well. But the reason for it is if you really look at like the psychology aspect of it, it's almost impossible to scale unless you're literally scaling fast, right? You need to have like a really fast forward momentum um, in order to be able to go out and hire a production team to create those processes. And it's not only that, what about like trials and errors, right? We've spent millions of dollars, literally millions of dollars on hiring employees, hiring and firing, trying out different softwares, trying out different techniques and tactics, losing clients because we tried stuff for them and maybe it didn't work, right? And that was back in the day. Now we have our processes literally on point. And we have a protocol for every single service that we do. Um, and that, that's, that's, how we, that's how we run our agency. It's all about processes and it's all about just making sure that the efficiency of what we're doing and how we're doing it is 100% to get really good success for the clients, which is at the end of the day, if you don't have that, you're going to be second in hamster wheel. Yeah, I want to touch on uh, three things, you know, that you were talking about as far as the gatekeepers. I mean, you guys heard, you know, um, the, the niches that he started out for. He said you want to pick a niche that is um, actually, you know, or you want to go into a niche that, you know, people actually, the owners actually have their phone or, you know, you can get in touch with somebody, a niche that you don't have to go through a gatekeeper for. So you want to try to pick niches like those. And, you know, he named, you know, plumber, uh, plumbers, contractors, painters, and uh, stuff like that, the home service niches. I mean, probably like, you know, cleaning, you know, services, you know, people that clean houses and stuff like that. So that was uh, one thing. So if you guys are having some issues as far as, you know, finding out what niche to um, go into or to look for, there's some um, you know some examples for you right there and then he actually just mentioned on chat bots I know you guys heard or you, you can look on my page whatever but I uh, interviewed the bot queen last week and she pretty much let you know how you know complicated or you know how much time not really complicated but time consuming it is to build out a chat bot and especially you know if you have many agents or you know many clients so I mean that, and if you're just one person doing it then I mean it's going to take you a lot of time because I'm um, actually I've service the client and I built out a bot for him and um, I'm pretty much still working. So the thing is, you know, you have to, um, it takes a, little, a while to build out a chat bot. And, um, you know, chat bots are very essential and they're very crucial, especially now. I mean, you can get a lot of subscribers, you know, you can uh, build campaigns and everything off of that and retarget. I mean, it's just easier, you know, as far as people that are in your, um, you know, your Facebook um, niche, I mean, you could pretty much just build a lookalike audience that's based off of the subscribers in your chat box. So, I mean, that's, and, uh, and then he told, you know, pretty much told you that, you know, it takes a lot of money to hire, you know, these different, these different people. So, I mean, this is pretty much just a no brainer. I mean, you agency owners out there that, um, you know, are just struggling just to get into, you know, just the fact of building out campaigns, building out SEO campaigns, building out Google ad campaigns, building out Facebook campaigns. But I don't think they're doing Snapchat yet, but I know they're doing uh, Instagram. But, um, you know, you uh, agency owners that are out there that are just trying to do everything. I mean, you might want to... Uh, uh, look at, you know, getting into, you know, Chad services, uh, you know, talk to Chad, reach out to him, let him know. I mean, he's always on the line. That's the thing. I mean, um, I, you heard, just heard he said, he hit, he just said he had 25 employees, but every time that, uh, you know, I have a message or a question for him, I mean, I can hit him up on Facebook or I can just go to their website and hit him up, dash clicks. But, you know, if you guys are on live, I think we had a couple of people join us. I think Tony's here. Uh, actually, my wife is here. I can uh, Quinnell and uh, I can't see these other people that are actually going away. But uh, the thing is, um, yeah. So I mean, if you agency owners out there that you know just just having you know a struggle, just trying to you know plow through, you know, just trying to have something grow, trying to experience some growth. I mean, Chad can help you scale scale quickly. And that was another other thing I wanted to touch on. You know, as far as scaling, I mean, it's going to be hard to say. I think. Uh, somebody calculated maybe like the average person can have maybe like seven clients and they can't go, you know, beyond, 
um, and beyond that, just by themselves, just doing everything themselves, servicing everything themselves. So I mean, you you hit. I mean, you already have an existing system right here. He already has case studies that I know they're building out. The program's actually still growing. I mean, his uh, company's still growing, and actually he's doing a lot of things as far as training and everything. I just saw last week, or uh, maybe about two weeks ago, because I know he he went to a, a conference in Florida. And um, I know that they're actually um, building out everything as far as they actually just developed the studio. I mean, if you look at the original post that I put on here about the interview, you can see a studio. I think it was on the left side of the picture where I um, um, pretty much just stole it from his uh, from his page. I, I copy pasted it, but I'm sure he didn't mind just, you know, just give him some uh, publicity to his business. So, um, you know, um, and I mean, obviously, yeah, he can help you scale quick. So um, I, I guess I got I got a, a question for you as far as just on the come up. I mean, what was uh, what's your go to? I mean, was there was there a go to um, book that you looked at? Was there a mentor? I mean, what what things you know actually helped you? Because obviously, you know, being an entrepreneur is not um, always la la land, you know, and candy, and you know, you just didn't um, pretty much, you know, just come up, blow up, you know. I mean, I guess in your yeah. down times, what did you lean on um, as far as you know getting through some of the rough times? Um, for me, I, I didn't necessarily have like a mentor, I would say. Um, I would have um, these various different businesses that I would just follow like a hawk. Uh, and I would do R&D and I would follow everything that they would do. I would go to Crunchbase. Um, I would follow any, any seed rounds or Series A rounds or investments that they would get in. When I look at a business, I look at like the bigger opportunity of how do you scale and how do you get investments and how do you hire how are you able to hire 50 people in one shot and really take off right and how do you spend a million dollars a month in running ads for your business and start getting two million dollars in sales right so when, when i'm looking at businesses i'm not necessarily looking at mentors i'm more so looking at like the business aspect to see how the businesses themselves are actually growing and there's some been some pretty big players out in the market that i follow i know i follow um madwire media um, they opened the same year that i opened in 2009 uh, they have probably about 600 employees, right? So I look at companies like that that are in the same space, and I try to figure out and dissect what it is that they're doing, what's working for them, what's not working for them, and then I try to replicate that in my business, and I try to do it better. So um, I, I've, I've taken courses. So I'm not going to say that I haven't, obviously. I, I always like to educate myself. I think education is huge. I know I took um, Billy Jean's course was one that I took. Um, uh, when we were first starting out in Facebook marketing a couple years back, um, I was actually at Billy Jean's office um, not too long ago in San Diego. I was at his event. Um, I just went to the Agency Influencers event. I, I, I'm going to the ClickFunnels event. I was at the ClickFunnels event last year, too. Um, I know Russell Brunson from ClickFunnels is one, I think, um, one person that I look up to that I follow because his business model is, I'm not going to say similar to DashClicks but it's that software style and gaining users and subscribers and, and followers, right. And, and going through that whole path. So um, when I'm looking at a business, I'm, I'm trying to dissect the business itself and not necessarily the person. So that's just the way that I think. And that's my mentality. But I, I mean, when I get home, that's what I do. I just do R and D. I'm always doing R and D. It's never, it never stops because there's so much stuff that's happening. Right. Uh, and then also one thing to say, just to piggyback off of one of the comments that you made for the studio. So, Yes, we just we just built out this whole studio. It takes an entire month to build out. Probably spent like twenty to thirty grand in that room just building out with the with professional equipment, right? Wrapping the walls, professional equipment, furniture, cameras, TVs, touchscreen TV, so we can do like drawing, you know, whiteboard style stuff. Um, just there's so much stuff. Um, GoPros hanging from the walls, like behind the scenes type um, stuff. Um, computers, 4K monitors. I'm talking about like our production room is like fully built out, right? And we're actually going live for the first time um, on Monday, which is going to be Monday, December 17th from 3 to 5 p.m. We're going to be going live and I'm going to be talking about three topics. Um, and the, the three topics I think were three um, top three prospecting um, to, um, tactics that we use to generate uh, clients for our retail agency. We're going to be talking about how to actually use the Dashlets platform during a sales call to catapult your sales. And we're also going to be talking about how to actually use Dash Clicks just in general and how it all works and how, the, how you can actually take advantage of it and how it can help scale your agency. Plus, we're going to be doing tons of Q&A. We're going to be doing um, prize giveaways, swag bag giveaways, and stuff like that. So we're really pumped up. I think we sent out the invitation yesterday. Um, we're, we're doing a hard cap of 500 uh, live webinar attendees. And I think we sent it out last night at like 7 p.m 
Within the first hour, we hit like 150 registrations. I don't even know where we're at yet. I haven't checked this morning. I'm sure we're going to get close to that 500. So, and it's completely free. That's what people don't understand is when you're talking about giving value, that's, I think, the, the major reason why Dash is scaling so much because we don't ask you for a dollar. Like there's people that come to the platform, they go, they use all of our resources, they use the platform, they use the dashboard, they watch all the videos, and they don't pay us a dollar. And that's completely fine because we're educating them. And we know that if we can educate them and we can help them, we can go out, go out and help them get more clients and they'll see the value in us and they'll use us for our services, right? So with DashClicks, unlike all these other courses and companies where you gotta go and you gotta buy a course, and you gotta spend $1,000 on going and buying a course, right? Or you have to now jump into like a, a like a 15K uh, a year, like a mentorship program or something like that, right? With Dashclicks, it's all free. You can just log into Dashclicks. Everything is free. You can go in there, um, and there's tons of free value in there. You can just go in there at any time and literally just watch all that stuff. Not only that, but we have like an entire, I don't know, like there's so much there's so much people inside of Dashclicks that it, it's, it's honestly like I, th I remember yesterday I was sitting with my developer, and we were looking at uh, the global map. So we use Intercom for our support ticketing and live chats. And through Intercom, you can actually click a button. It's like a little globe icon. You click on it, and it shows you all the users that are inside the dashboard, and it pinpoints them on a map globally. And it's crazy when you're looking at it because we literally have pins in almost every single country, and it's only been like less than three months. So there's users all over the world that are using Dashlets. It's not just here in the United States. So if you're outside of the U.S. and you're, you're looking to outsource your work, you can still outsource. It's all done within our Fort Lauderdale office in-house. So I can't stress that enough. Like th Those are the facts and those are the things that we live by here at Dashlets. Yeah, that's uh, that's some pretty you know interesting interesting things you guys are doing. You just for you guys that just joined us, I think Pat and William just joined us. I'm here with Chad. He's the owner of Dash Clicks, um, a servicing company for um, agencies on the back end as far as building out campaigns for them, building out uh, websites, um, doing SEO. And they just got I forgot to mention the dashboard. That's the uh, you know the big big thing with you guys where they can monitor everything. You know they got a CRM system where they can keep track of all the calls for your um, clients that you have. I mean uh, every lead that comes in they can um, pretty much monitor the lead and the conversation that they have on the telephone and they build out uh, other campaigns Google Ads and everything like that so I mean he did touch on a couple of points where as far as he said he pretty much just uh, mimics and he looks at you know other big companies and um, you agency owners out there you know if you're trying to scale I mean uh, actually that's something that I'm learning now as far as looking at other entrepreneurs because I mean some things you know you can't get out of a book you know it's some things you just can't be taught you can't study enough to get, um, you know, specific things and things that you need for your business, you actually have to go out and, you know, search them and, you know, like, like, I guess there's a saying that says, you know, some things can't be taught, you have to be caught. So, I mean, that's what he, you know, he's trying to do is just, you know, catch everything that everybody has, because there's just certain things you can't see or not contained, you know, in a book or even a training video. But the thing is, you know, he still says, just the fact that, you know, his company is still growing and, you know, some people might look at Chad and say, you know, he's arrived or whatever. But I mean, the situation is, he says it never stops. He says his research and development never stops. I mean, there is a, you know, an indication of a growing company there. You know, a lot of companies that um, actually my wife and I just had a conversation uh, this morning about Kmart going out of business. I don't know if Kmart, you know, nation national or whatever. But I mean, I think it is, but, you know, they're going out of business and, you know, it's like, why are they going out of business? Man, I think it's just the fact that, you know, they never, um, you know, really um just research and development i hadn't really seen any ads for them online it's like they didn't transition you know to uh you know what was um going on in the world today it's still stuck in you know an archaic mindset and doing things uh you know in the um of the old and in the past but i mean you just heard you know there's an owner right here that's saying he has a company that he continues to research and develop so you know that his company is going to obviously keep growing because he's not going to be stagnant and uh, the information that he has. I mean, you know, pretty much if you don't, you know, whatever you put in, that's what you get out. So if you put in old information or if old information is into you, you know, you, you constantly have old information, then obviously that's what you're going to, um, you know, get out. So, um, you know, you put in what you get out. So he's constantly putting things in. So obviously, you know, he's going to constantly put, in, you know, keep putting out fresh stuff. And that's fresh stuff for everybody that, you know, is involved with him, that's listening to him, that's around him, that's associated with him. So, I mean, this is a business a bond model. This is a business period, but a 
business model that I think you guys need to, you know, at least look at. I mean, you may not want to get into it right now, you know, because I'm all, I'm all, I'm obviously a researcher too. I mean, I like to research stuff before I get involved. So research, research his company, look at, I mean, talk to people who are actually using Dash Clicks. I know you can find them online, just Google them or, you know, actually, you know, at the end, he's going to let you know how to get in touch with him. So, um, you know, you can just reach out to him personally and just let him know. But obviously, you know, yeah, of course he's going to, uh, you know, um, brag on his company. So, hey, you don't trust him, reach out to somebody that's using him. I mean, you know, you get at, you know, get testimonial those stuff, you know, get, get, you know, get talk to other agency owners that are involved with this, um, with this program. And then, you know, he also reached out on different courses and stuff. I mean, he's always looking at, you know, different courses. So, I mean, it just goes to uh, let you agency owners know that, you know, you never arrive. I mean, even the business owners, entrepreneurs, period, you just can't get stagnant. I mean, a, a lot of people say, well, you know, you got all this money, you're making all this money, you know, every month. But the thing is, you know, if you stop, seeking then obviously that money is actually going to go away it's going to deplete and it's going you I mean you're just going to exist man nobody really wants to exist they want to thrive and um I mean, you just heard that he said, you know, he's giving out free training for you agency owners that are going out there and buying all these classes and going, not to say that you shouldn't do that, but I mean, if you have, you know, valuable information, go ahead. I was going to say, you definitely should. I'm not, I'm not, you know, bashing any courses yeah. or anything. I think courses are awesome. Um, I've taken them. I've purchased them before. Uh, I'm just saying that there's also a bunch of other, you know, additional, aside from the course, there's also additional free value inside of yeah. Dashboards. Yeah, that's what I was saying. You know, if there's valuable free information that uh, he's giving out, then you might as well just use it. And you heard the people that he, um, you know, looked at, Billie Jean and uh, Russell Brunson. Um, the fact that he um, actually um, is sitting under them and listening to them and actually reading, going to their trainings and stuff, which obviously, yeah, there you go. I mean, he says, you know, he actually pays for training. But the thing is, you know, the things that he's paying for um, – and uh, actually getting, you know, he's actually giving that to you guys for free. He's just putting it in, you know, his own words. And I mean, he's letting it, you guys know, you know, the uh, value of the uh, information that he's giving out. So um, I guess uh, another question, the fact is, um, how can you, um, or I guess, what would some other entrepreneurs look at you at and say, um, that I guess the way that you grew and scaled your company might be, I guess, a little controversial. I guess uh, a way that you grew and scaled your company, what would be a different way that, that or actually, I guess, how would that a person, I guess, a normal entrepreneur, if they were trying to grow their business and uh, scale their business like you, what, I guess, what would you tell them to do or what would be, I guess, a controversial way that you grew their business that they did not grow their business? Yeah, so I mean, if it's like if you're talking about like an agency owner, or just um, in general, yeah, period. Yeah. yeah, just in general business. I mean, I think networking. If you're not doing networking, networking is huge. Going to your like local, doing local trade shows, going to local events, just speaking to people. Like, think about social media. Think about the reach that social media has. Like, I'll go and I'll post something on Facebook, and I'll post a video on Facebook, and it might get a thousand views. And a lot of people nowadays are looking at it and are like, oh, he got a thousand views. But think about the actual people. Don't, think, don't look at it as views. Think about them as a people. That means you had a thousand people. Imagine a thousand people just sitting in a room and listening to what you have to say. Metaphorically, I know they're not in the room with you, right? But that's how people need to look at it. It's such an easy tool. Like right now, we're going to go live. We might get a thousand people to watch this video, right? It's a thousand people man. Like, you know how hard it is to get a thousand people in a room with you? It's really, really hard, right? So it's really important to go after stuff like that. Like social media is huge. Take advantage of it. Go become friends with people that are like-minded. Um, have conversations with them. Join groups. Like I know there's some awesome groups. I know you have a group, right? What's your, what's your group called for everybody out there who's uh, not in it who possibly... My group is called uh, Sima Six Figure Secret Scaling Hacks. So um, you can uh, reach out to me. It's actually on my profile page. So I mean, yeah. And uh, yeah, there you go. Like, joining groups and joining like-minded people. There's a bunch of like-minded people in your group. I know. I know that like the click on those groups is like 180,000 or almost 200,000 people that are all like-minded that you can just go in there and ask questions and have conversations with. I mean, like, go to events, go to, like, the, the ClickFunnels event as an example. There's going to be four, like, four to 5,000 people that are all like-minded. Go meet people, go network with people because you don't know, you don't know, like, the people that surround you or the people that, that make you. So it, it, you need to make sure that you're hanging out with the right click, you're hanging out with the right crew, you're, you're bouncing ideas off of people. And, and, and I mean, just that's, that's my opinion. Um, just making sure that you're joining all the groups, you're networking, you're meeting is going out and you're meeting as much people as possible, whether it's in person or it's online or whatever, 
whatever assets of going out and finding people and clicking with them that you can do. You need to go out and you need to meet people because that's how I grew my business. It's all about connections. It's all about meeting people. I mean, I hang out, and I'm not saying it's a brag. I'm saying it's because I've worked 10 years to get this, but I know owners to huge companies. I'm talking about companies that make $50, $60 million. I go eat dinner with them, and what do you think I do? I ask some questions. How is your business? Any advice that you can give me in my business? And I do that because I want to make myself better. So I get information from these guys that have already spent all the money going out and doing R&D and doing testing all this stuff, right, and figuring out what's, what's working, what's not working. They'll just tell me. Yeah, I tried this. You shouldn't do it. Trade shows in this industry doesn't work. You should do trade shows in this industry, right? So it's like network yourself around really good people and try to find people that will not only help mentor you, but actually help you and like hold your hand and walk you through the process. So that's the biggest, that was the biggest thing for me in, in my scaling. It's, you know, obviously you can go out and you can hire employees and you can do all that stuff, but just being around the right group of people and, and even online, being in the right groups and meeting people and doing stuff like this where we're going live and a couple hundred people will see it, right? It's, it's, it's a form of networking, so it's very important. Yeah, that's uh, interesting you put that. And the thing is, you know, I mean, in the light right now, I think we got one person on, but uh, think of Mari. Mari just joined me. What's going on, Mari? But the thing is, you know, if you're on live, hashtag live. If you're on replay, hashtag replay. But the thing is, you know, as they're saying, um, when you go out or actually, you know, you go live on Facebook, it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, there's a couple of people that tuned in. I mean, we had, a, you know, people come in and they join us every night. But the thing is, once you go live once, I mean, it stays, you know, live. So the thing is, you know, you might have three or four right now, you know, in the present. But the thing is, you know, it'll go out into the future and it'll constantly keep going. I mean, this information is going to constantly be recycled. So, I mean, where else can you go? I mean, if you put stuff on live or actually on the TV, if you buy a TV, buy, it's just one time, that's it. I mean, but the thing is, you know, on social media, once you put something on your page or once you put something even online, period, I mean, it stays on there. I mean, it's a piece of real estate that you actually just purchase pretty much for free. I mean, we're going live right now for free. I mean, I'm actually, I have a, a like, you know, a free software that I'm using. I mean, I'm using Zoom, uh, you know, the free version of Zoom. So, I mean, it's easy to, uh, you know, actually get your uh, information out, you know, get your word out. You just got to draw traffic to it. And then, you know, once you get leeway, then, you know, you can start paying. So, obviously, if you're getting eyeballs on you for free, then how much more eyeballs will you get on, you know, um, you know, if you're actually paying for, you know, paid ads online. So, I mean, that's an interesting, uh, you know, topic that um that he, um, that he, uh, you know, that he, that he touched on interesting subject. So, I mean, I got one more question for you, Chad. I mean, some people think this is a hard question. I don't know if you've been asked it before or not, but I'm um, going to ask everybody that comes on here and uh, that, uh, that I interview as far as, um, you know, if you had, if you were to have one superpower, what would it be and why, why would you want to have that superpower? I would want to foresee the future of processes, which probably sounds so stupid, but, <laughs> If I can foresee the all the errors that we have running in every business has errors. I don't care who you are. You're not super, nobody's Superman, right? So every business will have flaws, and if I can foresee those flaws before they happen, that would be my superpower. Because then I would never have any flaws, and my business would run smooth. So that would be my superpower. I know it's probably you know, it's probably sounds stupid, but it, when you're a business owner, you really understand that. Um, that's like a big part of your business to be able to see stuff like that happening. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. So I guess uh, the people that, um, uh, how, how can people reach you? I mean, you got a website. Actually, what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll get him to send me the website, but I mean, you can go ahead and let, um, let everybody know, and then I'll come back in and put it in the comments or you can just type it in the comments yeah. now. Cause I think you are, I think you're inside the, <coughs> yeah. So everybody can just go right here. I'll just drop it in here. Drop right. dash. Uh, no. um, and you can go in there, you can get a free account. Um, it's 100% free, literally. You can go sign up for a free account. If you're an agency, you can bring your entire dashboard. Once again, 100% for free. Watch tons of videos and courses are all in there, 100% for free. Um, speak with our team, speak with our members. I'm in there. Open up a live chat, communicate with us. Tell us what you're struggling with and we'll help you. We'll try to fix the problems for you. Once again, 100% for free, right? You only pay us when you, when you use our services. That's it. And we know if you're using our services, we're going to help you make your, your money on it, right? We're going we're to get you that ROI. And you're going to be able to keep that client long term. So if you don't have a Dashclicks account, just go to dashclicks.com, click on the link below, um, and just get that account. All right. Well, you heard it from Chad. Yeah, we thank you for joining. You got some valuable information here, how to scale, how to grow your business, gave you some topics 
on uh, what his services and everything can do. So like he said, um, you got any questions, just reach out to him or you just want to, you know, more information about what he can do and, uh, you know, everything that his company um, provides and that he services or, you know, just to go get the uh, free training that he offers. Um, just reach out to him. And yeah, I did want to touch on one more subject as far as, you know, just the fact though. Yeah, actually I did because I'm actually in your pot and you did send it out. Yes, it was yesterday. And actually I was one of the ones that registered. So um, I'm in that, I guess you said about a hundred or so. So uh, yeah, I'm trying to get all the information that I can, you know, um, whether free or rather paid. So and especially, you know, I want the valuable information, but we do thank uh, Chad for joining us and uh, you guys will be back yeah. on. Yeah, we'll be back on, uh, you know, sometime soon. So uh, we appreciate it, and uh, we hope you all have a wonderful day. Sounds good, man. Have a good one. Bye, guys.